Hello booktube, so um, my battery ran out yesterday so I've recharged it overnight. We're in the final stages of the Mahusiv book haul. So the first one I've got to show you is The Haunting of Henry Twist by Rebecca F. John. I think this was a birthday present again. It's set in the 20s and basically Henry Twist, his wife who he adores, gets run over and killed by a bus while pregnant. The baby survives and then this strange man appears and he feels drawn to this man Henry feels that it's his somehow it's his his wife coming back to him next one I think this is either from Eleanor or Brittany for my shell slam book and this is the history of bees by Marja Lund England 1852 Tick. William is a biologist and seed merchant who sets out to build a new type of beehive, one that will give both him and his children honour and fame. United States 2007, George is a beekeeper and fights an uphill battle against modern farming but hopes that his son can be their salvation. China 2098, oh this, I love where this is going. Tao hand paints pollen onto the fruit trees now that the bees have long since disappeared. When Tao's young son is taken away by the authorities after a tragic accident, and she is kept in the dark about his whereabouts and condition, she sets out on a gruelling journey to find out what happened to him. And it, it suppose it's quite telling really that oh, potentially bees are at risk and this is what could happen. Look at the cover. This is like if you take the dust jacket off, this is what it looks like inside. How gorgeous is that? So pretty. It's about bees. I love bees. I've also got, uh, and this is a little book I got for myself, Little Women by Louisa May Alcott, and this is an absolutely gorgeous Knickerbocker classic edition. I have seen quite a few versions of this on film. One of the uh, ones I do love is the Catherine Hepburn version, because you know it's Catherine Hepburn. I've never actually read it. I was looking through, you know, some of the lists that people do of the favourite Christmas reads, and I thought, yeah, it's right, it, you know, because a lot of it is in the snow and Christmas, so I thought, it's time I read it. These Knickerbocker classics are really affordable, and absolutely beautiful. The next one I've got is The Glass Spur by Lauren Di Stefano and it's got, and I'm not keen on these, it's got like deckled edges there on the end which I always think, did you intend it to be messy? So yeah I'm not keen on those, no they need to stop. But it says Wilhelmina Hedel, the fourth child and only daughter of the king of the world's wealthiest nation has grown up in the shadows. Kept hidden from the world in order to serve as a spy for her father whose obsession with building his empire is causing war. Will wants nothing more than to explore the world beyond his, her kingdom if only her father would give her the chance. Until one night Will is attacked and she discovers a dangerous secret. Her touch turns people into gemstone. At first Will is horrified by her power as she tests its limits she's drawn more and more to the strange and volatile ability Ooh, I would be I'll just have some diamonds Pink. When it leads to tragedy though, Will is forced to face the destructive power within her, finally leave her home to seek the truth and a cure. But finding the key to her redemption puts her in the path of a cursed prince who has his own ideas on what to do with Will's power. With a world on the brink of war and a power of ultimate destruction, can Will find a way to help the kingdom that's turned its back on her or will she betray her past and her family forever? Next I've got Renegades by Marissa Meyer. The Renegades are a syndicate of prodigies, humans with extraordinary abilities who emerge from the ruins of a crumbled society and establish peace and order where chaos reigned. As champions of justice, they remain a symbol of hope and courage to everyone, except the villains they once overthrew. Obviously, they're going to be a little bit bitter, aren't they? Nova has a reason to hate the Renegades and she's on a mission for vengeance. As she gets closer to her target, she meets Adrian. Adrian? You don't really think of Adrian? I know, superhero Adrian? No. Anyway, Adrian, a renegade boy who believes in justice and in Nova, but Nova's allegiance is to the villains who have the power to end them both. Next, The City of Brass by S.A. Chakraborty. This is a big floppy one. Nari has never believed in magic. Certainly she has power. On the streets of 18th century Cairo, she's a con woman of unsurpassed talent, but she knows better than anyone that the trade she uses to get by, palm reading, czars, healings, are all tricks. Both the means and the delightful end of swindling Ottoman nobles and a reliable way to survive. But when Nari accidentally summons an equally sly, darkly mysterious jinn warrior to her side during one of her cons, she's forced to question all she believes. For the warrior tells her an extraordinary tale across 
across hot windswept sands, teeming with creatures of fire and rivers where the mythical married sleep, past ruins of once magnificent human metropolises and mountains where the circling birds of prey are not what they seem, lies Devabad, the legendary city of brass, a city to which Nari is irrevocably bound. But in Devabad, within the gilded brass walls laced with enchantments and behind the six gates of the six jinn tribes, old resentments are simmering, and when Nari decides to enter this world, she learns that the true power is fierce and brutal, that magic cannot shield her from the dangerous web of politics, that even the cleverest of schemes can have deadly consequences. This is a book of short stories, and this is Murder on Christmas Eve, and it's obviously got short stories by well-known crime writers Marjorie Allingham, Val McDermott, G.K. Chesterton, um, Ian Rankin. It seems that murder, ghost stories, mysteries do go hand in hand with Christmas, so I thought that'd be a nice one just to dip in and out of. This one I saw on Eleanor's channel when she was doing her uh, advent calendar, and she's so naughty she's made me buy it because it sounded great and this is The Winter Garden by Christine Hanna Eleanor absolutely loved it Meredith and Nina Whiston are as different as sisters can be one stayed at home to raise her children and manage the family apple orchard the other followed a dream and travelled the world to become a famous photojournalist when their beloved father falls ill these two estranged women will find themselves together again standing alongside their cold disapproving mother Anya who even now offers no comfort for her daughters on his deathbed their father extracts one last promise from the women in his life. This is Coming Home to the Comfort Food Cafe by Debbie Johnson. Beautiful, pretty Christmas scene. Welcome to the Cozy Comfort Food Cafe. That's a winner for me. Where there's kindness in every cup of hot chocolate and the menu is sprinkled with love and happiness. Moving to the little village of Budbury, Zoe hopes the crisp Dorset sea breeze and gentle pace of life will be a fresh start for her and her goddaughter Martha. Luckily for them both, the friendly community at the cafe provide listening ears, sage advice, shoulders to cry on and some truly excellent carrot cake. That sounds good to me. And when Martha's enigmatic absent father suddenly turns up, confusing not only for Martha but Zoe too, the love and support of their newfound friends is the best present they could ask for. Just sounds like just a lovely warm hug of a book, doesn't it? This one, I saw um, a Twitter feed from Waterstones where the author Joe Lysett um, was reading a little snippet of this book that he's, he's wrote and it's called Parsnips Buttered. It just made me laugh and I think it's just like some like funny little irreverent emails that Joe uh, writes. He's a comedian in the UK and I thought this sounds like, a, you know, just something fun and a good laugh. One of the things that I got for my birthday of my lovely husband was a subscription to Fairy Loot which is a YA subscription service where you get a new YA book every month and lots of goodies to go with it and I've got a few to show you and I absolutely Absolutely love it. One of the first books I've got to show you is The Last Namsara by Kristin Sicarelli. Asha is a dragon slayer. Reviled by the very people she sworn to protect, she kills to atone for the wicked deeds she committed as a child, one that almost destroyed her city and left her with a terrible scar. But protecting her father's kingdom is a lonely destiny. No matter how many dragons she kills, her people still think she's wicked. Even worse, to unite the fractured kingdom, she must marry Jarrett, the cruel commandant. As the wedding day approaches, Asha longs for freedom. Just when it seems her fate is sealed, the king offers her a way out. Her freedom in exchange for the head of the most powerful dragon in Virgard, and the only person standing in her way is a defiant slave boy. I feel rather sorry for dragons. I do think they're absolutely, I mean I know they're not real, but I do think they're absolutely beautiful. I love them. Don't kill them. Just occasionally as well with Fairy Loot you get an extra book as well. And so this is an advanced reader copy that they sent out. Fury Born by Claire Legrand and obviously the cover to be, I mean it's a big book. A stunningly original must read fantasy series of 2018 follows two young women centuries apart Part, who hold the power to save the world or doom it. That's quite intriguing. One of the gifts that they did send, I think I got it this month, is this. Absolutely gorgeous. It's a little waterproof padded book pouch. So, you know, like obviously if you've got issues like I have with everything's going to be pristine and perfect and a book cannot look like you've read it, this is like if you're taking your book around to places, we'll keep it beautiful and pristine thrilled with that totally thrilled. Um, the next one I got is again an extra book that they put in and apparently this cover is an original one-off cover that you can't buy in the shops and this is The Language of Thorns by Lee Bardugo and I think it's from the Court of Thorns and Roses series I think uh, so it's a beautiful naked hardback. If you look inside there are beautiful illustrations on the pages absolutely Absolutely beautiful book. 
two more to go. Now then, I think I am done. <laughs> Next one I've got to show you is Forest of a Thousand Lanterns by Julie C. Dow. Look at that, the snake there. Destinies for greatness, bound for ruin. Zifing is beautiful. The cards foretell her fate. She's meant to be Empress of all Feng Lu, but only if she embraces the darkness buried deep within her soul. Down one path lies obscurity, the other leads to glory, yet not without great sacrifice. A lover spurned, cruel magic exploited, one question, one choice, reigns above all others. Is the price of the throne too high? And finally, I feel like we should have a fanfare here. Do, 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 do. I shouldn't really do that when you've got a terrible um, chesty cough and a bad throat. The last one I've got to show you is called Even the Darkest Stars by Heather Fawcett. Beautiful cover. Kamsin has always dreamed of becoming one of the Emperor's royal explorers. The elite climbers tasked with mapping the wintry mountainous empire and spying on its enemies. She knows she could be the best in the world if only someone would give her a chance. Everything changes when the mysterious and eccentric River Shara, the greatest explorer ever known arrives in her village and demands to hire Kamsin, not her older sister, Lusha, as everyone had expected oh, for his next expedition. This is Kamsin's chance to prove herself, even though River's mission to retrieve a rare talisman for the Emperor means climbing Raksha, the tallest and deadliest mountain in the Arias. Then Lusha, all the names in these fantasy books are so difficult for me, uh, Lusha sets off on her own mission to Raksha with a rival explorer and Kamsin must decide what's most important to her, protecting her sister from the countless perils of the climb or beating her to the summit. The challenges of climbing Raksha are unlike anything Kamsin expected or prepared for, with avalanches, ice chasms, ghosts and other dangers at every turn. And as dark secrets are revealed, Kamsin must unravel the truth about their mission and her companions while surviving the deadliest climb she's ever faced. It sounds just a bit like, you know, a bit of fantasy thrown in with adventure. So that is it. We've reached the end. If you stuck with me to the end, thanks for hanging on in there so that's it for now I will hopefully be back with you full time reading my books again engaging with the lovely booktube community because I've really missed you all and I will see you all soon keep reading